to the first half and then going, you know, kind of a, a closer game in the second half, you kind of just kind of pulled it away. Coach was saying that there were some t- teaching moments that he was able to bestow upon you, but you were also able to, to tell him how, what it was like out there. From, from we'll, we'll start with Franz and then, and then we'll go with Isaiah. What was it in the first half that you were telling him you were seeing out there and what kind of communication at halftime did help you change and turn things around the second half? Um, I think we in half, at the halftime we talked about um, moving a little bit more. I think we had a couple possessions where we overdrove it a little bit. Um, kind of when it took, our, took away our first and second option, we kind of didn't know what to do. Um, so I think we definitely did a better job with that uh, after halftime. Um, and it's just uh, making the right play. I think we had a couple of turnovers that we, normally we don't have. Um, so, yeah, those little things, I think, matter a lot. Yeah, kind of like what he said, uh, take care take care of the ball was obviously the, the main priority. And obviously, second, uh, a lot of guys pass up some open shots that we don't normally do, um, me personally. But came back on the second half and, you know, just got back to Michigan basketball. We were shooting our shots, running our offense. Guys were swinging the ball. And it was back to the uh, culture. You know, we played for one another. And it was – Ron said the hot hand tonight. Other guys, like Sean D didn't have the hot hand. But he still played defense, and we still were talking. And that's – I think that's what most what's most important about our team. So that was the adjustment he made us uh, second half was just trust. It's one of our core values, trust one another. One well, quick follow-up, when it comes to kind of that culture and, and speaking about that and knowing when you see a guy like Franz, you know, have a hot hand for, for you personally or for, for the entire team, is there kind of a communication during a timeout, but like, oh, this guy's on fire, like we need to get him the ball more? Or how does that flow during the game and you start realizing that? Oh, yeah. Uh, I think it happened when sometime in the second half. Uh, he was asking us, because Coach Howard, he's transparent. He asked us what play, uh, three Bonnie, three 99 open. You know, personally, I said Bonnie. Let's get Franz downhill. They're obviously not stopping him. He gets the basket with ease, get a free throw, or create a shot for someone else. Uh, but they, I think they denied it or anything. But other than that, it's just, that just shows what kind of trust Coach has in us of calling our plays. So obviously, for a hot guy who's just had a hot first half. But other than that, no, it's just about going back to trust one another. Next up is Orion Sang from the Detroit Free Press. Franz, you've had three 20-point games in the past four games. Do you feel like you're playing your best offensive basketball this season right now? Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm staying aggressive. Um, just trying to not do overdo, I think. That's what I did uh, to start the season. But, um, yeah, finding that balance of when to be aggressive, when to make a play for someone else. Um, and I think it's a lot of fun uh, playing with the team. Um, nobody really cares about who, who scores the points. Um, I think you can see uh, the results uh, that happen when you play like that. Did, did the layoff um, kind of help you self-evaluate, you know, how you were playing, what you needed to improve on? Um, yeah, but I knew that before, too. Um, I mean, the layoff for me, it was more mentally uh, being able to um, kind of lock out a little bit of, of the normal practices and games and all of that. Um, but then it's really hard to get back in shape and stuff like that. So that was definitely a challenge. But as a team, I think we handled the, the, the lockdown really, really well. Next up is Zach Shaw from the Michigan Insider. Isaiah, as a captain, um, what impressed you the most about being able to play with this kind of energy and have this uh, quick turnaround and, and be this prepared and everything? And, and Juwan was mentioning he thinks sometimes you guys are almost – professional like and how you take care of your bodies how you rest recover and, and everything like that I guess how does how does that manifest or how does that become a thing that you guys are really good at yeah being the leader uh, I kind of just tell the guys uh, is this what you're going to see in the tournament you have a, a day between and you got to play that uh that final game in that location and then you move on to the next location well that's just like normalcy without COVID but other than that it's it's like that uh we got to now focus on a recovery guys still got to get their homework done focus on their scout and film. It's kind of less physical hands-on stuff. Coach Ozzy talked about earlier how we're rolling into an NBA schedule, so we have to be professionals. And I feel like that still rings a bell in all our heads. And we went out there and we took care of business today. Tomorrow we got to recover, get off our feet. Like I said, get back to our studies and then prepare for our matchup Tuesday at home against Illinois. So other than that, I just try to stay in people's ears, especially the young guys. Next up is Andrew Kahn from M Live. This is for Isaiah, just sort of a bigger picture question on your, your career, your, your, your growth over your four years, becoming two-way player, like Jawan says, and, um, you know, doing things other than shooting. 
Um, he, he said there were times where you had to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Can you give an example, like what maybe he means by that? Yeah, um, when Coach Howard got here, I wasn't more of the defensive-minded guy. I wasn't the guy in the media that was talking about, he's a defensive guy, we can put him on one of the best players. Uh, Coach Howard coming in, that was the first thing he told me on the phone. He's going he's gonna to make me a two-way player by the time I leave here. And the progress with that, you have to literally, like he says, get uncomfortable with the situation. I mean, when I'm tired and I don't feel like guarding, I can't take the easy way out. I, I got to – my brothers are relying on, me, relying on me to get a stop. So I got to move my feet, talk, keep my hands active and, you know, just play defense and obviously play a snore without following. But other than that, it's just doing all the little things. Uh, I'm not used to being a guy who is the defensive guy. I used to let people drive past me and then I'd block it off the backboard. Now I got to move my feet a lot better. I got with Sandman, did some ladder stuff and, it was uncomfortable because you just don't, like I said, you, you're trying to save energy for the offensive end. Like I figured out that I have more energy to use. Like Coach Howard, he discovered it before I even knew it, and he's turning me into a two-way player. Thanks. Next up is Brendan Quinn from The Athletic. <clears throat> hey, guys, if both of you can comment on this, what do you uh, remember from your first impression when you guys got back this summer uh, and you met Mike for the first time? And he comes walking in. I imagine he came up to about here on you guys. And, and you you asking yourselves whether this guy can play in the Big Ten. What was your first impression? Ron's met him first. I let him go. Um, yeah, we were roommates in the summer. Um, my first impression, I mean, I was just thinking, what a character. Like, such a great guy. Uh, loves to make jokes. Loves to laugh. Um, and really easy to just um, be around, I think. Um, in the locker room, um, very vocal. Uh, making jokes and stuff like that. I think that's a big part of our chemistry. Um, him, him as a player, him as a character in the locker room, uh, being vocal, just being himself. Um, and during a long season, I think it's very important to sometimes uh, be able to make a couple of jokes and not be so locked in all the time. I think uh, that makes it easier to then uh, focus on the game and stuff. Um, but once practices start, um, I think you can see how, how experienced he was and um, how he really uh, knows – knows what counts um, in games. And um, even when teams make a little run, um, I look at Mike and he's not phased at all. Um, and that, that helps, I think, a lot of younger players too. Um, they see their, their point guard uh, be super relaxed and be ready for the next play. Yeah, Mike, uh, I knew he was going to fit in. Like, like Franz said, his character. Uh, we're big on locker room and he fit perfectly. Easy to talk with. You can easily criticize and talk to him. He doesn't overreact by anything. Like you said, he's a calm, cool, collected vet. And you can tell he's been he's been through this. Uh, not not at the high level, but he's obviously ready to make that step. So is like I said about earlier, Coach Howard trusts recruits this guy automatically. He already has my trust. And he was already family the day he committed to Michigan. So and I even contacted him, asked him, you know, to try to get to know him a little bit more. And he came in, and then when practice started, obviously. Uh, yeah, you could see the experience difference. Uh, he played at his own pace. I remember he brought the ball down, obviously, in the first practice. We got to play fives. And he made some quick move on me going baseline. I was just like, dang. And then he slowed. So if I jumped, I would have got a foul. But he jumped to my body, ball away. I was like, dang. Like, he can play in the Big Ten because a lot of bigs are going to go and try to go for that foul. And he's a great free throw shooter. So that's when I knew he had a poised head and a po uh, poise to his game. And, yeah, Mike Smith is a character, like Brown said. Great. Thanks, Bill. Next up is Ethan, Ethan Sears from umhoops.com. Uh, yeah, Franz. Um, someone, someone mentioned last week how you kind of worked on not being quite so hard on yourself compared to last year. I'm, I'm just maybe wondering about that and kind of the mental side of things and how that's played into how you've been playing lately. Yeah, I think um, it's more in games. I think after games and after practices, I think it's okay to – be disappointed in like how you played and stuff. But I think last year I did a poor job with my emotions in the game. And I think that affects not just me, but uh, obviously my teammates too. And, and the other team too, when they, when they see an opponent <clears throat> be fr is frustrated and stuff like that. So um, I, I tried to work on that. Hopefully as a little better this year, but um, that's something I'm definitely going to continue to have in, in the back of my head. Um, Cause emotions is, is a big part of the game. And um, the game is probably like 80% mental. So, um, that's definitely something that I thought of um, in the offseason and talked to Coach Martelli about. And, um, yeah, for sure. Next up is Jake Hall from the Athletic. 